Hi all. Today we can discuss about the Parseval's theorem for the Fourier series. Uh, this theorem gives a beautiful relation between the function and its Fourier coefficients. That is, the average of the square of that function, which function we are writing the Fourier series, we are taking the square of that function and the average of the square of that function, how it relates to the Fourier coefficients, that theorem is known as the Parseval's theorem for the Fourier series. So the Fourier coefficients are general, we know that A0, An, Bn. Then the average of the square of that function we can denote it as f of x square that is square of the function this symbol denotes the average of the function then the average of the square of the function is the first you square that function f of x square then find the average average means the we have to sum up all these and divided by the total so we are summing up the total function that is from over one period one period is 2 pi that is from integrating from minus pi to pi over a period the total period is 2 pi so we are dividing it by 2 pi so the average of the square of the function is 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi f of x square dx. If we are considering this function in terms of 2L, we can write it as 1 by 2L integral minus L2L f of x square dx. The, this average of square of function, how it is relates to the Fourier coefficients. There is a beautiful relationship between these Fourier coefficients and this uh, average of the square of this function. We can see what is that. If you are writing the Fourier series in the general form, that is f of x is equal to a0 plus sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n cos n x, sigma n equal to 1 to infinity b n sin n x, the Parseval's identity is this average of the square of this function will be equal equal to a0 square plus half into sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n square plus b n square. That is we are first of all we are squaring this function then we will get the square terms a0 square a n square x uh, cos n square etc. Then we are finding the average of that square of that function. So this half fun, uh, term is introduced here because when we are doing that derivation in the cos square terms and sin square terms will come the average of the cos square term is 1 by 2 average of the sine square term is 1 by 2 that's why here we are getting a 1 by 2 term here sigma n equal to 1 to infinity n square plus b n square so uh, see the beauty of this equation this uh, Parseval theorem is not for finding the uh, integral uh, this average of the square of this function that is very easy we can just integrate the function uh, over a period p after finding the square but it gives how the average of the square of this function relates to the Fourier coefficient that is the law between this Fourier coefficients and the average of the square of the function over a period we can see in the Parseval theorem for the Fourier series okay if we are writing this Fourier series in the complex form that is f of x is equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity c n e raised to i n x we have seen in the last video the, com the complex form the function is writing in the Fourier series as sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity cn e raised to i n x then the Fourier coefficient there is cn then the Parseval identity become the same the average of this function over a square of the function over a period that is equal to sigma minus infinity to plus infinity cn square okay then the same uh, Parseval identity we can write for the half range sine series and half range cosine series also. The half range sine series is f of x is equal to a0 plus sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n cos n x. So what will be that? The average of the function over that period is equal to what? It will come a0 square plus half into sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n square. But the uh, difference is then only difference is that in the half range cosine series series and half range sine series we are taking a half period okay that means we are defining already this is from 0 to pi or from 0 to l 
even if it is a cosine series or half range sine series we are taking the half period so we have to take the average also like that that is from the integration we are doing from 0 to pi or and divided by this pi if you are writing it in terms of l 0 to l this is 1 by l so the average of the square of that function over a half period is equal to a 0 square plus half into sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n square for a half range cosine series Whereas for the half range sign series, we know that there is a, no A0 and AN terms there, only BN terms come there because half range sign series is equivalent to an odd function. So this then the parcel identity becomes 1 by pi 0 to pi f of x square dx that is the average of the square of function over a half period is equal to half into sigma n equal to 1 to infinity BN square. So this Parseval's theorem gives a beautiful relation between the Fourier coefficients and the function which describes the Fourier series. So, uh, don't understand this as a, it is just a method to find the average of square of the function. No, it gives the relation between the Fourier coefficient and the average of the square of that function. The average of the square of function just we are seeing by integrating the function square of that function over a period 2 pi this using this formula. Okay, uh, if it in the complex form, then also this is, we can see that this is from the minus infinity to plus infinity, cn square, the average of that function. We can see one problem, then it will be more clear. Okay. See this question, that is asked in the latest net examination, uh, that is in December 2019 CSIR net examination. The question is the function is a, of t is a periodic function of 2 pi, in the range minus pi to pi, it is equal to e raised to minus t. First of all, we can write what's the given. It's given there. That is the function is given as e raised to minus t. If f of t is equal to sigma minus infinity to plus infinity c and e raised to i n t denotes this Fourier series, then the sum sigma minus infinity to plus infinity c n square is. So what we have to find out in this expression, Fourier series expression, what is sigma minus infinity to plus infinity c n square. This is a given function. They are given that the Fourier series expa expansion is minus infinity to plus infinity c n e raised to i n t. These are the data given from the question. Then we can see that what we have to find out is the c n square coefficient sum. Then how to find out this? First of all, check this is given in the Fourier series is given in the complex form. If it is in the complex form, this minus infinity to plus infinity coefficient square is the uh, uh, is the average of the square of the function from the Parseval's identity. So we can apply the Parseval identity here. What is the Parseval's identity if the Fourier series is in the complex form? That is the square of the average average of the function is equal to sigma minus infinity to plus infinity cn square. So it is very easy if we can find out using this Parseval identity that is it is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity cn square is the average of the square of the function over a period. How to find out the average of the square of the function? First of all square the function here it is uh, f of t so we can write it as f of t square square the function then total divided by it over the period that is 1 by 2 pi total we can by find by integrating from minus pi to plus pi so it is over dt integration with respect to t that is 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi f of t is e raised to minus t so f of t square is e raised to minus 2 t dt then it is on integrating we are getting 1 by 2 pi the e raised to minus 2 t divided by minus 2 apply the limits minus pi and plus pi so on applying the limit it becomes 1 by 2 pi the upper limit is here our minus is there, we can take outsides. Now applying the upper limit, it becomes minus 2 pi minus on applying the lower limit, it becomes e raised to 2 pi. So it is equal to 1 by 2 pi. I'm taking minus here. So, so we can write it as 1, 2 is also here. Okay. So uh, it becomes e raised to this minus also taking inside. So this becomes e raised to 2 pi minus e raised to minus 2 pi divided by 
2 this is equal to 1 by 2 pi see this expression e raised to 2 pi minus e raised to minus 2 pi by 2 that is the expression for the hyperbolic sine function so this we can write it as sine h 2 pi e raised to 2 pi minus e raised to minus 2 pi divided by 2 is the expression for the sine hyperbolic sine function. So, it becomes 1 by 2 pi sin h 2 pi. That is in the question, the option, the given option D is correct. 1 by 2 pi sin h 2 pi. So, uh, this question is very easy. If we know the Parseval's identity, uh, we can find out the answer without much time. Uh, this is asking for 5 mass in part C. Okay. So, uh, Try more questions similar to this. All the best.